Hey there, my name is Father Richard Cullen. Welcome to my summary of Craig Rochelle's book, Winning the War in Your Mind, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. Craig Rochelle begins the book by saying, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So what we think shapes who we are. This is true of where we're at today, largely a result of how our thinking has led us here, and it'll shape our future. What will consume our minds will control our lives going forward. So if you don't like the direction your life, your thoughts are taking you, then you need to change your thinking so that you can change your life. For Christians, we say that our job is to change our way of thinking, to allow God to do his job to transform our lives. In order to do this, Craig puts forward four key principles. The first principle is called the replacement principle. Remove the lies, replace with truth. First, we need to remove the lies. We need to realize that we have an enemy whose name is Satan and his target is our mind and his weapon are lies. His goal is for us to believe lies so that he can corrupt our minds and destroy our lives. Now, if you ignore this battle or try to fight the battle with your own strength, you're guaranteed to lose. But if you engage in the battle with the power of God, you are guaranteed to win. In order to remove the lies, first we must realize what are the lies that influence our lives. Craig Rochelle puts forward a lie detector test. The way to do this is to write down what are the problems in your life right now, and then begin to ask probing questions about those problems, like how did this problem arise? How does this influence my thought behavior? What do I think about this problem? Why is this a problem in my life? and then try to pinpoint the lie that we've believed that has caused this problem in our life. The second thing is to do a thought audit, he says. So take a pad of paper on your iPhone and for a day, try to become aware of all the different thoughts that you have and write down the negative and positive thoughts and become aware of the different thoughts that are entering into your mind throughout the day. Once we grow in an awareness of the lies that we are internalizing, then we can work at removing the lies. And we primarily do that by replacing it with the truth of God's word. Just as Jesus defended himself against the lies of the enemy in the desert by wielding the weapon of God's word, the sword of the spirit, holy scripture, we need to do the same thing. Jesus led the way for us and he showed us a model by which we're supposed to engage with the enemy and win the war. The way that we do this, Craig Rochelle says, is to write it, think it, confess it until you believe it. So we're supposed to write down the truths of God's holy word that impact our lives, that go directly against the lies that we've believed. And then we're supposed to confess it. We're supposed to proclaim it out loud. We're supposed to think about it continually in our minds, meditate upon it day and night until we actually believe it. And it begins to influence our lives in a way that we experience this transformation that God so desperately wants to achieve in our lives. The second principle is called the rewire principle. And Craig Rochelle says, rewire your brain, renew your mind. Our brains literally are being rewired around our thoughts every day. And the more you think a certain thought, it creates these neural pathways, which make it easier to think the thought again and again and again, like going down the same path over and over and over. Now, this can be good when we're thinking good things, but if we're thinking bad things, it can be really bad. And this is where we get our bad habits from. We think a certain thought, and then it becomes somewhat automatic. It becomes habitual for us. So the exercise that Craig tells us is to write down your bad habits and to become aware of maybe the thoughts that are leading you to achieve those bad habits in your life. Once we're aware of our bad habits, then we can work at renewing our mind, rewiring our brain. Rather than go after the specific behavior, behavior modification, we need to work at thought modification. So it's like instead of going after the bad fruit, the behavior, we need to work at transforming our minds, which is really the root system of the tree. In order to really allow the root system to be transformed, we need to go back to God's word. 
And this is where Craig tells us once again to really allow God's Word to soak into our minds and hearts. An extra step that he puts forward is to put out declarations. So after you've written down the truths of God's Word, you turn it into a specific declaration that you want to proclaim about God's Word. The third principle is called the reframe principle. Reframe your mind, restore your perspective. Craig says that we all have these cognitive biases. You've heard of the statement about looking through life through rose-colored glasses. Well, it's true in a sense. We all have these cognitive biases or distorted ways by which we look at reality through our own subjective experience from past hurts rather than the objective truthful way that reality is actually presented. Although we can't control what happens to us in life, we can control how we frame it. This is very powerful when we look at our past experience. The exercise that I recommend to do is called an emotional inventory, in which you write down a lot of the key emotional events throughout your whole life. Often these are going to be ones that have bad emotional experience connected to them. And then invite Jesus into those events of your life and ask him to give you a new perspective, a new frame by which you can look at it. The goal is to move from our distorted cognitive bias of that situation, being maybe frustrated at God for why that happened, to having a new cognitive reframing of that experience in which we're able to see how God was working through that event and how, as we say in Romans 8.28, God works all things for good for those who love him. The fourth principle is called the rejoice principle. Revive your soul, reclaim your life. Craig Groeschel calls us to rejoice and praise and thank God for who he is, not just what he has done for you. And this gets into a far deeper perspective of praise in which is not contingent upon whether we're having a good or bad day to express our gratefulness to God, but is rather based upon who he is. We're able to see beyond the problems of the day to look and see about God who is unchanging, who is always good, always worthy of our trust, praise, and worship. An exercise for this is called Ten Finger Gratitude, in which you count on each finger one thing that you're grateful for about who God is, not necessarily what he has done for you today. I hope you enjoyed the summary of Craig Rochelle's book, Winning the War in Your Mind. If you'd like the written summary of this book, click on the link below that brings you to my blog. God bless you.